So it's very important that we think about that internal education piece as well. But as we're saying, social media is being utilized by B2B companies. Dell, in fact, actually utilizes it on their investor relations page. And in fact, as they utilize it, they did a study of their own investor relations page of who's reading it, and they found a lot of institutional analysts and research analysts are looking at their specific investor relations page. But it's not just the big companies like Dell. You have smaller companies like China Wind Power creating investor relations pages, the investor relations blogs, utilizing the social media sphere to communicate their messages to slightly different audiences. So as we see this happening, consistent communications matters today more than ever before. And it matters not just because the conversations are ongoing, it matters also when we start thinking about search. Because search, search engine spiders, value the consistency of new content. Sometimes it takes six to eight weeks for Google to spider the whole web and the billions of pages out there. But to get them to keep coming back to your page, you have to have a frequency of content. So as we start thinking about this, this is why my belief is that search and search engine optimization is really the foundation of social media. Because you have to be able to find content before you can share content. So that searchability factor is very important. And they say that content is king, right? I know, he's a little creepy, isn't he? But how many of you heard this? Content is king. Well, guess what? I don't believe it. Because content for content's sake doesn't matter. If content is king, then context is the almighty. Because content has to be within the right context for the search engine spiders and for your audiences to care about that content. So when we think about the modern search engine, this is kind of what it looks like. This is what I like to call today the Google Blender. Does anybody know they make blenders? They're really great. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, but if we look at this, this right here, if you can't read it in the back, is a search for the Lockheed Martin F-35 fighter jet. Not exactly a consumer-friendly product. I, I know everyone thinks in America we have, everybody has one in their backyards, uh, but they're really quite expensive. Um, but we think about the Lockheed Martin F-35 fighter jet, and look how much content comes up in that first page of search. We've got news, we've got photos, we've got video, we've got blogs, we have some of their corporate pages. It's blended content today. How much of this page can you own? Today that is your home page. But guess what? It's not just when someone does a search on your brand name or on your product name. It's about when someone's searching for a solution. A solution that maybe your product or service provides, but if your content isn't coming up when that search is performed, then they're going to somebody else. So it's about, again, raising that awareness in the marketing funnel. So when we think about this, the importance of search, 94% of users don't ever go past the first page. Better yet, 33% click on the first link. Most important though is 39% of people in a study that was done by Jupiter Research found that the relevance or the prevalence of showing up in search actually was linked to how they felt about a company. It helped them make their impression, make their first decision on who this company is, what they're about, what I feel about them. So as we think about that, we look at you know, the search pyramid, creating good quality content in context, followed by good keyword research and targeting, and then link building. And that's one of the reasons why it's so important that you utilize services that are going to get your content not just on your own website, but outside of your own website to build link building. And then finally, social. That's the newest piece, the pinnacle right now is all these Google plus ones, Facebook likes, shares, tweets, etc. now matter. And it's not just about the tweet, it's also about the retweet. So if we're thinking about how those are now affecting all of these different pieces, and we're going to see that continue to grow in importance. So some tips for your news releases. Very quick tips. First, create tweetable headlines, 120 characters or less to allow for the retweet. Now, before you write that down, I'm sorry to say it, that's actually false today. <laughs> actually, it has to be shorter. 
It needs to be 65 to 80 characters with spaces because today your headline is what's called the title tag. It's what's basically the first thing that the search engine spider sees, the H1 tag. And to show you actually this live and in action, we're going to go over here to the PR Newswire website for a second. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull down a release. Here we go. Look at this one. Comedy Central wins five primetime Emmy Awards for The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, Futurama, and TheDailyShow.com. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Now, if you look at the very top in the blue, see it gets cut off. And it gets cut off right about, right about there. That's all the search engine spider really sees. And I bet you Jon Stewart, Futurama, and The Daily Show are probably the main important thing. So 65 to 80 characters with spaces. If you face this problem, break it up and use a subhead. The subhead will help fuel that, uh, that, that search because it fills what's called the H2 tag. So as we go back into it, we think about keyword research. In keyword research, we want to really think about keywords and keyword phrases because most people don't search utilizing one word anymore. We've been trained over time to see that search box will get better results when we utilize more terminology. So if we're thinking about better results, better terminology, it's interesting that recently I went to a company in Silicon Valley and I looked at a couple of their news releases and I said, but by looking at your news release, it seems that your really hot term is mobile. Oh yeah, yeah, mobile, that's what we're really going after. I said, okay, well mobile what? Mobile phone? mobile home, I mean, they're very different things. So, and if you do just do a search of mobile, you're gonna get millions if not billions of search results. So we have to think about those key phrases. There's some great free sites that you can use, like Google Insights for Search, Google Trends, even going to your own webmaster and your own web team to ask them, how are people getting into our pages? There's lots of search agencies that you can work with, so there's lot of information that's out there and available for you. But once you've found those right keywords or phrases, make sure that you concentrate them in the headline, in the subhead, in the first couple of paragraphs because that's what matters most. But if you overuse it and it sounds like you're trying to write for a robot, guess what? The search engine bots are smarter now. They will ding you if it sounds like you're writing for a bot. You want to write for a human. So guess what? The biggest mistake that I see happen out there for companies and organizations. Every sentence in their news release starts with the company name. That's too much. When someone's doing a search, now your name, that information won't come up in organic search. It may come up in just a Google News search, but not an organic search because you've overused it. So we think about keyword research, one important factor is don't listen to the business executives. I'm sorry guys, but you all know this, we know this at PR Newswire, you get caught up in your own vernacular. Talk to your salespeople, talk to your customers. What are the terms, what do they call it? What are they calling the solution? So you can utilize the terms that they're going to be able to find better. Finally, please use links and releases. Over 70% of releases that go out today still don't use a link. Worse, those releases that do include links, often the first time they use a link is in the boilerplate at the end of the release, the About Us section. So we want you to link, but not just link to the home page, link to a specific page, to a deep link, to where are you trying to get people to go to today. If you're talking about a white paper, send people directly to that page. If you're talking about a new product, a new survey, send people directly to that page where they can get that information. Think about you know, utilizing anchor text or hyperlinked keywords or phrases, but if you're utilizing the service to distribute your message, make sure that somewhere in the release, utilize the good old fashioned URL as well. Because if you want to build link building, you want to make sure that your link is always getting seen. And while we can send out hyperlinked words or phrases, the problem is, is that still today there's a number of sites that take our content that won't actually make that link live. So if you still have that good old fashioned hard URL out there, it's still going to give people the opportunity to click and it's still going to make sure that your link is there. Better yet, if you have a really long URL for that direct link, 
go ahead, utilize a URL shortener. Utilize something like Bitly. Um, one quick note, um, services, there are not all sh URL shorteners are created alike. Um, so you want to make sure that you utilize ones that do what's called a 301 redirect. Sorry that's getting a little bit geeky for you, but you want to make sure that you know, you're utilizing a URL that sends that search spider on through to that uh, link that you're redirecting to. Don't add too many links, just like in keyword phrases. If you add too many links, you're trying to game the system. So about four, releases, four links in a release. So this is all about raising visibility, right? But how is the best way to raise visibility? Well, we did a study. and We looked at over 12,000 releases. And what we found is every step along the way, when you started including multimedia, the different types of multimedia all along the way increased, increased the number of views that you got. In fact, on average, a full-on multimedia news release got 77% more views than just a straight text release. But you don't have to do that with every news release. Think about just utilizing a photo or just utilizing a video. Every step along the way, it increased the number of opportunities you had to be viewed. So if we look at that, we want you to think visually. However, the problem is when you think visually, most companies think visually like this. Kind of boring, right? The boring headshot, the product shot, the logo. How many of you work in a data intensive company or organization? Produce lots of data, research maybe. Okay. Guess what? Data can be sexy. It is true. Now, I do have a shirt that says, I love data. But the thing is, is we don't want to create visuals like this. We want to create visuals that look more like this. This was actually created by a bank. Now, if a bank can create something interesting, I'm sure we can all create something a little bit more interesting. They were basically looking at the price of Christmas gifts. So they created this total Christmas price index. And you can see how it takes what could have been a very boring spreadsheet. And I don't know about you, but I don't know that many people that like Excel spreadsheets. Myself, not really. If you're an accountant, maybe. But take that data, take all of that information and make it much more visually appealing. Because when you utilize those visuals, you don't get just more views, you get better opportunities. And so here today, if we're looking at how people are getting and receiving their news, this here is mobile device. How many of you are familiar with Pulse News? Anybody? Pulse News is one of the most downloaded news applications on mobile devices worldwide because it's available on just about every kind of mobile device and mobile platform. But when you open up Pulse News, this is what the feeds look like. Now, which of these feeds would you be more likely to look at if you're looking at something that is the size of this screen? And if you say PR Newswire, I'm sorry, I know you're lying. <laughs> because the truth of the matter is not enough people are thinking visually. But that visual matters, especially on the small screens. If we look at the PR Newswire feed, Wow, that looks like a really interesting visual, right? Guess what? It's just a small little visual, but it makes a really big difference on a small screen. How content is displayed. Think about how many people in this room, sorry to say this, but how many, how many people in this room are single? It's okay, don't be shy. All right, how many people in this room have ever been on Match.com? Come on, we're all curious who's out there, you know? But would you ever look at a profile that didn't have a picture? No. If somebody sent you a message, would you look at that profile if it didn't have a picture? Absolutely not. Would you buy something on eBay if it didn't have a picture? No. Would I look at a story if it didn't have a picture? Maybe. But if it does have a picture, I'm much more likely. 